the Bible says something amazing. It says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, but you have no idea how fearfully and wonderfully made you really are. The savior of the universe is literally imprinted into your anatomy. All his actions and words mirrored onto the human body so that you can know his real name and know that he is real. The earliest known examples of compound microscopes, which combine an objective lens near the specimen with an eyepiece to view a real image, appeared in Europe around 1620, 1600 years after Christ walked the earth. Can you hear? Do you have ears to hear? You see, Christ healed the lame and the deaf and those with leprosy. What you're looking at is the cochlea of your inner ear. And if the co and I believe that the cochlea represents the inner tree of life. Let's simplify this and go over each of the inner parts of the ear and compare them. And what you're looking at is a part of the inner ear called the stapes. It is the last part of the inner ear before it enters the cochlea. And the, there are these, it's one of these three small bones. Now the interesting thing about the stapes or the stirrup of the inner ear is that in other languages, the word sounds like the word used as crutch. In Bosnia, Bosnian language, the word crutch is staka, which kind of sounds like stapes. In Italian, it's stampella, which sounds a lot like stapes. So you see, the stapes of your inner ear is really a crutch. And we knew that Jesus healed the people that needed crutches, the lame. He also healed the deaf and those with leprosy. Now this is fascinating as we read this story about what Jesus actually did. There was a certain man lame from his mother's womb. He was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Now this gate of the temple is known in the ancient world. Here are images of it. And if you look at this, you will see that this gate of the temple is near Solomon's porch. And it looks exactly like the structure of the inner cochlea, with a gate and a porch overhanging the gate. This is fascinating. The story continues. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto him un in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And so now you understand how you are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of the microscopic images of the inner ear reflected in the gospel healing. We even have leprosy and the word to describe the scaling away or leprosy in the root word of a, the word for a leper is reflected in the naming of the cochlea of the inner ear. So the scripture continues, but when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame and the blind. And here you see the eardrum looks like a plate with a spoon in it for the feast. So we have all the components, the kicking away of the crutches, we have leprosy accounted for. 
we have Solomon's temple, the porch, and the beautiful gate. Inside the utricle and saccule are hair cells similar to those in the organ of Portland. The hairs are clustered in the macula, where their processes are embedded in a gelatinous mass and lie under a thin layer of crystals called autolymphs. When the head tilts, gravity moves the crystal mass and distorts the stereocilia of the hair cells. This is how the saccule and utricle provide information about position with respect to gravity. Do you have ears to hear? Jesus did. How did Jesus know the inner workings of the human ear on a microscopic level? Because he came in the flesh. He is the flesh. And in Matthew, he talks about the inner workings of the ear on a microscopic level. When he said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? This generation, like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. Auditory signals sent from crystals. The miracle of hearing. And again in Matthew 13, Christ talks about ears to hear when referencing sitting by the seaside and great multitudes gathering together. And they stood on the shore and he talks about a sower of seeds. And he talks about those that were planted in the deepness of earth were the ones that survived. Fields. Fields of wheat. And the disciples came and they said to him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore I speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And so now you understand that only those who believe and understand that Christ was the flesh, he is described and imprinted on our very bodies. Why would God have it any other way? The savior of the world, the salvation plan imprinted the secrets onto our very flesh so that we could know beyond the shadow of a doubt in the last days who the son of man is. And again, later on in the same chapter. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field.
this is depicting the pineal gland. Now, I'm going to show you a diagram here. This is pretty neat. This is actually shows the exact location of the pineal gland in a three-dimensional representation. Let's pull this up here. And this is pretty cool because it spins around. Now, the pineal gland is the little red dot in the center of your brain. And we talked about how the eyes in your head are like the two thieves on the other side of Jesus on the cross. And then when your eyes cross in the middle, your optic nerves cross in the middle of your brain, but that's representing the crucifixion, okay? So when I dovetailed that with the David and Goliath story, this is what I found, you guys. I'm going to share this with you. I'm also going to go into Google Earth and show you some imagery of this. That's pretty neat. I want to read this. Every, now, as Christians, all of us have read this story a hundred times, right? One thing, and I think it's funny that I never learned in church, was that Goliath was a Nephilim, okay? that They just seem to just leave that part out of the story, right? But more importantly, when we dig deeper into the story, we find the real truth, okay? It says, And the Philistine came on and drew unto David. Now, um, Goliath was all decked out in, like, armor, and, you know, he had a giant sword. He had um, chain mail, all of his defenses, right? So this is an analogy of our life, right? We think we can protect these physical bodies, but if our spirit isn't right, then nothing happens, right? And we die. We die in these physical bodies that we're fighting so voraciously for, to protect. And it says here, the man that bare the shield went before him. Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on his helmet of brass upon his head. So Saul's arming, arming him up, right? And um, also he armed him with a coat of mail, and David girded his sword. So you can imagine the view of this, right? What's happening here? Getting him all set up. And David girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. How do you prove the defenses? David's making a point here. You can't protect the body unless the spirit is protected. Now watch this. This is amazing. And David put them off of him. So he threw off all of his defenses and he took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook out of the river now i believe that this is all about five stones is the fifth age the brook is the age of aquarius the water and they put him in a shepherd's bag who was the shepherd that was jesus christ and then he put his sling in his hand and he drew near to the philistine now, as we continue on with the story, Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. So they, Phil, uh, Goliath's shield was so big, he had to have a man carry it for him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Do you come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. So he's threatening David. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day... Will the Lord deliver me into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. The Lord saveth not with sword or spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into your hands. David said, I will not slay you with the sword. I will slay you with the mind, the center of Christ. Now, I'm going to show you something here, and this is amazing. Look at the eyes, and remember the pineal position. And this is the crucifixion of Christ. You see the two thieves. Let's zoom in on this. 
These are the two thieves that try to steal your salvation. And Christ turned to one thief and he said, you will be with me in paradise. He turned to one thief and he said, you will be with me in paradise. Okay, that is the good eye. And if your eye causes you to sin, cut it out. Okay, gouge it out. This is all in the Bible. So here we have in plain sight. Because this eye optic nerve crosses this optic nerve. They cross in the middle in the pineal position. And then they go continue on to the back of the brain. So there's your cross of crucifixion where Jesus was crucified. And here are the two thieves. Now to me, this is a slam dunk. Because Jesus was crucified in a place called Golgotha. And Golgotha means skull. And there he was in the skull, crucified, with the two thieves that try to steal your salvation. Now, you, many of you that have been on this channel have heard this truth before. You've heard this truth before. But now dovetailed with the David story where he hits him in the middle of the head. Let's read this. And it came to pass that the Philistine arose. And came and drew nigh to meet David. Then David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone, one of the five stones. Remember the fifth age of the stones he gathered in the brook of Aquarius. He put him in his shepherd's bag, the shepherd of Jesus Christ. And he slang it and smote the Philistine in the forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead. Now, why would they say the stone sunk into his forehead? Because they want you to get the picture that it's inside of his brain. They're talking about the pineal gland, you guys. And he fell upon his face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. And smote the Philistine and drew and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Do you see how we win? We win with the mind, you guys. We win with the mind. And we have to stand up for the truth. No matter how people look at us, no matter what people say about us, we have to stand up for the truth. Because if we can't even do that, then no amount of armor is going to protect us. That is what this story is saying. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath and slew him and cut off his head and when the philistines saw their champion was dead they fled so there you go now watch this what does the sling represent i believe that the sling is the hyloid canal remember this stone sunk into his forehead he fell to the earth the pineal gland, it calcifies. It turns into a stone. Just like the stones that David used to slay the giant. Remember the enmity between the seeds I was telling you guys about? The enmity between the Nephilim and the holy seed that was unaffected by the mixing of the serpent. Those are the two seeds. Okay, now watch this. I just showed you the pineal gland there. Let's read about the calcification. Because remember, we talked about the umbilical cord and the sling, which is in the eye, the hyoid canal, which nourishes the lens until the child is born, and then it disappears or it tries to disappear. Sometimes a remnant is left. Well, I think there's a, a similar analogy with the pineal gland. As soon as a child is born, let's read about this. It starts to degrade. And that is what God was trying to represent with this story. The Philistine represented full-on sin. A completely calcified pineal gland in the forehead. Which is what happens when we're born into sin, right? Born into sin. 
It says here, calcification of the pineal gland is typically 1% of study participants in young adults and has been observed in children as young as two years of age. The calcified gland is often seen in skull x-rays, Golgotha. Calcification rates vary widely by country and correlate with an increase in age, with calcification occurring in estimated 40% of Americans by their 17th year. Now you know why they pump us up full of vaccines when we're young. It probably has something to do with the calcification of our pineal gland. Calcification of the pineal gland is largely associated with corpora unesco, also known as brain sand, the stone from the brook. Now, doesn't the Bible take on a whole new, much more interesting and engaging meaning once we start to dig deeper? The pineal gland is our antenna, you guys. Our antenna is spirituality. It's the kingdom of heaven within. It's the conduit through which we connect with God. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. Jesus is real. He's not an imaginary stone in your head. He is real. God encoded the meaning of all that is so that we can understand he encoded it within our brain, the anatomy, the physiology. He encoded it within our eyes so that one day, the knowledge would increase, which is what's happening right now, and everybody would know who the true God is. We would use our brains and we would understand that nobody had seen inside of a brain before, or knew what a pineal gland was, or knew the inner anatomy of an eye 4,000 years ago. No one knew except God. And all of the events of the Bible pointed to this anatomy so that we would know that he's God. And people could stop dodging God, dodging belief in a higher power, dodging the sacrifice that his son made, because his son is at the center of the story. If you guys are understanding this, his son is at the center of the story. Here he is right here in your brain, right between your eyes. You can't miss it. Now, Saul was the one that equipped David with his defenses. And David said, I don't need these. Shake them off because I first must connect with the Lord of God in the pineal position. And that's how he slayed the giant. Now, it's interesting because Scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see. Now, I think this was a different Saul because much different points in, in history. Scales. What are these scales? These are the serpent scales, you guys. This is the cross-section of the, of the rods and cones. Here's the scales. Fell from Saul's eyes. This is the inside lining of your eye. Here is the cross section. We find the picture. Here it is. Here's a good one. These are the scales that fell from Saul's eyes. This is the inside lining of your eye. What other scales are inside that fell from Saul's eyes? Let's say a cross section of the lens, human eye. Here's the other scales that fell from Saul's eyes. Let me show you those. And you do a cross section of the lens of the eye. I had a really good picture of it somewhere else. It looks like scales. Honeycomb matrix. This is the lens. This is the glass, the heart, you know, the structure that's in the eye, the lens. That actually the light comes through and is reversed. And here are the scales. This is this cross section, the scales that fell from Saul's eyes. Some studies show that the degree of pineal gland calcification is significantly higher in patients with Alzheimer's disease versus other types of dementia. So here you go. Cutting off, uh, calcifying your pineal and cutting off your 
your ability to connect with the spiritual. Maybe it could be the cause of Alzheimer's. I don't know that, but there seems to be a correlation there. Pineal gland calcification may also contribute to the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease and may reflect an absence of crystallization inhibitors. So there it says right there, calcium, phosphorus, and fluoride deposits in the pineal gland have been correlated with aging, showing that as the brain ages, more deposits collect. There's also tumors. And what many people don't understand is that there are what seem to be rods and cones inside the pineal gland, just like there would be in the eye, that there are some kind of receptors within the pineal gland. So what's in a cross? Ever wonder why Christ rode in on a donkey? He was fulfilling a prophecy from the book of Zechariah. This was one of many prophecies Christ came to fulfill, linking him squarely under the God of the Old Testament, the Most High. But why a donkey? Was it because it was a lowly creature and signified humility? That could have been part of it, but I believe this goes far, far deeper. And this is the wonder of the Bible that very few dig deep enough to ever find. You see, the markings on a donkey resemble a cross, and they hint to the coming sacrifice of the Lord before he was ever born according to the prophet Zechariah. So what else is in a cross? Well, there is a strange membrane, an extracellular matrix that connects all living things, and it is called laminin. It encodes the word lamb, and it is shaped like a cross. It's described as a protein network foundation for most cells and organs connects the cells to the world around them it's the interface the scaffolding for all that is living and literally holds us together in a mathematical complex puzzle and various laminin types actually combine to differentiate and divide our organs and muscles into their various forms almost like a shepherd rearing his flock so what else is in a cross? Well, these are your optic nerves and they cross in the place in the middle of your brain called the optic chiasm. Described literally as A-B-B-A -B -B -A, or Abba, which means father. Now your optic nerves terminate at your eyes and there you see the two thieves at the cross. Now when light passes through your eyes, it crosses at the center near the pineal gland and radiates to the rear of the brain in what is called a visual cortex or a mansion with many rooms just above the arbor vitae in the cerebellum. Arbor vitae is Latin for the tree of life. The light is literally sitting above the branches of the tree of life. So you see, when Christ was crucified on a cross, it meant much more than you could ever imagine. The truth about his existence was right beneath our skin all this time. The proof of the kingdom of heaven was within 